welcome to this edition of Elven Home, which really concentrates on two things. Uh, the first, the completion of the scenic work at the front of the layout and the installation of the finished wall. Uh, and the second, uh, getting on and actually building the brass etch kit from seven models of the little church chapel uh, that will go up at High Elven. So let's get on with, first of all, completing the work on the wall at the front of the layout. Well, as you can see, I've removed the walling from the front of the layout. Uh, this is to enable me to stick on the channel, uh, the evergreen uh, strip styrene channel that I'm using, and also to get that painted up. I've got a section of wall here. If I can get this to focus, it wasn't doing it earlier. There we go. You'll see that there's that I've cut at regular intervals uh, a line to give me the uh, the separation between each of the uh, slabs of the of the wall capping and it is as you can see from this side just evergreen strip styrene channel uh, which has been put along the whole length uh, and that's all drying and then what I'm going to do is put a wash over the top of that let me put it back in focus put a wash in top of uh, on top of that uh, and uh, a bit of work with um, some paint uh, some powders to uh, dry brush onto there to put some weathering onto the wall so it's not quite so pristine. But what I want to do now, and what I'm going to spend the next uh, hour or two doing, is to put along this area here at the front uh, bushes. I think that's the easiest thing to do, just to cover up that grey that is between where the ballast ends here. Uh, there, some of the where the cork sits, there's also a bit of a step down onto the wood of the of the board. So by putting some um, bushes and uh, clump foliage in and around that area, I hope to, to cover in the whole area right from where it goes. Is my finger here? Yes. From here, just as it emerges from the tunnel, and it, I will cover right the way down to the uh, viaduct, even though the ballasting is not complete yet for the track just as it comes off the viaduct. There's work needs to be done around there before I can ballast that section. So I'm just going to crack on. Um, doing it exactly the same way for those of you uh, who want who would, would prefer to see what I actually do I'll be using pretty much the same techniques as I used to do if I just come around here um, this section here and I'll put in the video at this point uh, a link to uh, the video in which I showed me doing the work at the front of the um, of Grey Havens so I'll come back once I've finished that work and once I finish the wall work, so you can see the uh, the final effect of the wall to take the front of the layout. In the first uh, video of the year, I spoke about the seven models brass etch kit of a church that I was going to build. And you'll recall that actually one of the reasons why there was a gap was that it took a while for things to arrive to help me paint it in particular. But everything is here now. And uh, I've got so far on the uh, work that I was doing at the front of the layout and I thought it was about time to turn back to the this brass etch kit model. Uh, quite a lot of people were interested to see how I got on with this and I had a particular request from Paul Smith who said please could I show the construction not just photos at each stage. So I've set up another camera which I'm just going to leave running whilst I'm working on this kit um, I, I've, it's not as close as this view because I can't work around, not very easily, uh, around the, uh, the camera. But you should see it from the side uh, and I'll try and um, hold things up to the camera if I remember as we go along. At the moment all I've done is freed everything from the single uh, brass sprue that it came on. I should be able to put a picture in here taken from my um, from the video where I showed you the, the kit and it's uh, I've done nothing more than use these um, cutters that I don't use the Xeron cutters because uh, they're too big and bulky these are quite thin and nifty uh, to get in and snip the brass now what I'm going to do is go in and clean up because as you'll see um, in places I've just I really have literally just let's get that in the focus just taken them apart so I'm going to clean all these pieces up uh, then I will and obviously uh, file them down the instructions say that you can do this with super glue 
Um, I suspect purists of brass etch kits would say, no, 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 you should be soldering. But I will, you know, I'll do what the manufacturers of the kit say. Uh, oh, that's out of focus. There we go. You're in focus again. Um, so I'm what I'm going to start doing now, and I'll speed the film up just um, and try and slow it down uh, once you see it to see the look of assembling the model. I'm going to assemble the model before painting it because I think it'll be fairly straightforward to prime it all fairly uh, as a full kit. Uh, the only thing I probably won't put together is the putting the windows in, but everything else will be done um, because the windows I will paint white separately. I will put a white primer on the whole of the kit and then go in and do the painting of the of the uh, bricks and the roof and the rest. Uh, and that is the bit where I think if I had the windows in, you can almost guarantee a big daub of some unpleasant colour would go on my nice pristine white windows. So um, I hope you enjoy this build. I hope it works. All I intend to do for this video is get to the point that the kit is made and then I'll work on uh, the painting uh, separately and you'll see that in a later video because I don't know how long this is going to take me. I don't think a long time, but you never know. Uh, one thing to show you, I can't remember whether I showed this to you in the last one. This is the tool that I'm, oh, sorry for blinding you there, that I'm going to be using to help me do the folds. It's made by PD Models. They call it their flip and fold. There are plenty of other tools out there that are designed especially for brass etch kits to be able to uh, fold. Um, and I'm going to be using this one to help me do the folds. The kit, of course, comes showing where the folds need to be. If I can try and do this without blinding you again, you can see very clearly here the line where the fold needs to be. Uh, and also, again, on the back. So it's not going to be difficult to uh, know where you've got to put the folds, but this tool does make things much easier. The kit instructions recommend uh, some flat uh, thin nose pliers which you would use and uh, and the edge of a steel rule which I suspect would be the only other thing you'd be able uh, to do it with but this little tool I've used before uh, on my greenhouses in particular uh, and it's a, it, it works a treat. So let's get on and build this church and I'll speak to you once I've got the thing completed. As you can see here, I'm starting the work of cleaning up the edges, cutting off any pips that are left from where they came off the sprue, and then filing flat uh, any remaining um, pips that are left. Uh, this is working, first of all, on the roof section. And then in the next few shots, you'll see me working my way through other uh, items. And now you can see me using the tool to start bending the main body of the building. Uh, the tool is really very useful. I did encounter a problem in that the tabs that are on the tops of the roofs uh, caused them to foul on the side of the bending tool. And you'll see at some point uh, I actually get out some uh, pliers which have got plastic uh, tips on them uh, because I just couldn't get them into the flip and fold tool uh, which was interesting I'd not come across that problem before So having glued the main body together and put, set that aside to set, I started work on one of the side uh, parts of the, the church. This is, must be a, um, this is the other side which uh, comes out to form the cross shape of the church. 
uh, and that was, was bent into shape. Again, I found the pliers more useful for me, particularly bending the tabs on which the roof has to sit. Uh, I then marked in its nine millimeters from the edge where the line of the uh, side building sits. So you see me marking it out there and then fixing the side building to the side of the church, making sure it's square. Uh, I then folded the what is the entrance, which sits on the other side of the church, uh, whilst I was allowing the first one to set. And there you see the pliers being used to do the folds and the bends because it has a nice good straight edge and of course the plastic doesn't mark the metal. Where you see me sanding it's just to uh, slightly abrade the surface to improve adhesion uh, of the glue. And now you see the other side, I think I'm putting the roof on, the first uh, side aisle or side chapel that, uh, that I'd put on. Now I'm fitting the door entrance and after that the roof for that will be fitted. Uh, the roof was nice and easy to bend with a folding tool. And now I'm forming the roof for the bell tower. Uh, which folds round on itself to provide that sort of conical top to the square-sided uh, roof tower. Or I suppose actually it's a tetrahedron, I think. And that fitted very well. I, it went together very easily. And then I glued it. You can see it sitting in the, in the front, almost front centre of the shot. I then put, uh, fitted the louvres to the uh, bell tower uh, and then folded the bell tower around. The louvres would not be able to be fitted after painting. And now I'm just fitting the roof onto the uh, bell tower. And I'm pleased to say it was all square and all fitted as it should. It needed to be carefully judged so it, the top wasn't wonky. And finally beginning to get to the end of the build, fitting the roof on first of all, which I made sure was, was solid before I moved on to the final stage. Uh, and this I had to measure eight millimeters in in order to fit the bell tower into its position and again it fitted beautifully and that was the end of the model. Well here we are with the uh, completed model except for uh, the doors and windows which you can see here which I will paint and fix uh, after I've painted the external part of the kit. I, it's a lovely lovely little kit um, the imperfections in the building are down to my inexperience. This is the first brass etch kit of this size that I've ever made. And I think uh, I learned a couple of things about how to go about bending some of the parts. Um, and uh, I've not bent some of them entirely accurately. All of it, however, I think is capable. There's some pieces that need a bit more sticking down. But what I want to do at the moment is let all the glue completely dry for 24 hours. So it's all completely gone off. And then I can go back to places where I may need to put a bit more pressure on. Because uh, the danger is if I do it now, I will just pull off the thing that I've only just stuck down. Um, but I am, I am pleased with this little kit. I think it'll make a lovely little church. And I'm looking forward to thinking about uh, painting it. So uh, there we are. That's stage one of the build of this kit. And in the next edition, we'll start thinking a bit about how we go about painting this brass etch kit. OK, well, I finished the work of putting the bushes and, and what have you along that edge uh, of painting the capping and fitting the capping on top of uh, the wall. And so that's now been able to be put in. At this point, I'll insert some footage I took before I put the wall back on 
just to show what the uh, border looks like with the bushes just on the end uh, and you can get some idea here of uh, what it looks like from this angle uh, and then in a moment I will uh, put some footage that I will um, yet to record but recording from the end of the layout so you get to see what it looks like from looking from within inside the layout and I think at some point in this video uh, I might do a running session with the train cam so you get a view of what uh, what it all looks like. I think what we'll do is we'll bring a train down from uh, High Elven uh, down along the branch line into um, Weathertop, which I don't think I've done for a while. Uh, and it might be interesting to see uh, what that journey now looks like as so much more of the layout has been landscaped. So I'll uh, just uh, reposition the camera actually and then give you uh, a view from the other end of the layout. Okay well I've moved to the other end of the layout now just to give you a quick view of the, uh, the bushes uh, and I think what we'll do now is we'll go to some running shots using the train cam uh, and then we'll come back uh, to wrap up this edition of Elvenholm. And with that journey down to uh, Weathertop from High Elven, that pretty much brings this edition of Elven Home uh, to a close. Um, more in the next edition on the painting of the church, which is sitting, as you can probably just about see, up next to the pub. That's roughly where it's going to be. Um, and I think also one of the things that's been occurring to me recently um, in one or two of my videos you may have seen the odd coach clip the corner of the platform end the, that's nearest to us here at Weathertop. The 8Fs uh, also have a wider uh, outside valve gear so I now have gauging issues in that the 8Fs really do give it a good whack and I really don't want to, that to, have, to happen. So I think at some point soon the platform is going to need either surgery or replacing with a, with a, um, a perhaps slightly shorter, very slightly shorter, three or four centimetres perhaps, and maybe slightly narrower. Um, so I've, that's a piece of work that I may have to do just to replace the platform surface itself uh, because it's causing me a problem, uh, which is a shame but uh, the ATFs are so good there is no way that the ATFs are not going to be able to run round in both directions. For trains uh, travelling clockwise round the layout there's not a problem. It's the trains travelling anti-clockwise that uh, clip the platform and it's, it won't be much of a thing I think to change it except all the wiring for the lights and the rest will all have to be undone to allow me to lift the platform off. So that's a thing on the list of things to do uh, probably in the next few weeks because it's annoying me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this edition of, uh, of Elven Home 
Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, well, please do subscribe and give me the uh, and give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, of course. Uh, and if you have any comments, well, the comments are just invaluable to me uh, as I go through uh, building the engine shed uh, and doing other work. And I always enjoy uh, getting the comments and responding to them. So until I see you again in about a fortnight's time, that's goodbye from me. Bye-bye.